Okay, so the last part that we need to really discuss about for our ANOVA testing with respect to hypothesis testing is how do we talk about our post hocs? So our post hocs is after we make our conclusion and then we want to actually know which groups are different from the other. We know that so if we get a significant result at least one is different. Which one? So you'll, sometimes you'll see a plot like this, or sometimes you'll actually see some values. Um, like so suppose we got like, okay, A minus B, our confidence interval would go from, I don't know, like one to three, one comma three, and then we would do B minus C, and that'd give us something like negative two comma negative one. And then C minus A would give us something like uh, negative, sure, negative one comma two. Okay, so let's suppose that that's our confidence intervals. How do we talk about this? There's three of them there. Some of them are significant. Some of them are not significant. What do we do? Okay, so here's what we do. So we start off the same way as we have done before. So uh, suppose that we have significant results. We said that at least one was different. We've got this graph. Let's see. So we can start off with our statement. We are, let's suppose we did a alpha level of 0.05, 95% confident. that the true difference in means for the following comparisons are contained within the following uh, confidence intervals. Okay, so we are no longer 95% confident that a minus B that the true mean lies within this range. We're 95% confident that each and every one of these intervals together, sometimes they call it a family, like pairwise comparison, that all of them, we're 95% confident that all of them have captured their respective a true difference in the means. Okay, so when you get this, a lot of times I would then just like copy and paste this piece right below. I can't do that on a light board, so I'm just going to leave it right there. But suppose that I had taken this and I put it right there. Now, once we do that, now we need to talk about the ones that in fact are significantly different and maybe which ones are the greatest and which ones are the smallest. So if we look at this, we can actually order our groups. We know, for example, that okay, that A is bigger than B because it's this would be A minus B and it is positive. So we can have that A is bigger than B. Okay, we know that A and C are not shown to be significantly different from one another. So we can put C really close to A and B and C are shown to be different with B being smaller than C. That's why it's negative. Okay, so we've got this grouping right here. All right, so we've got two comparisons that are significant. We've got one that is not significant. We really only need to talk about the ones that are significant. So what we can start off by saying is we could talk about all this either by talking about A compared to B and B compared to C, or we can shortchange it. We can say that, uh, we found B um, being significantly less than both B 
both A and C. If you want to comment that A and C were not shown to be um, significantly different, you can, or you could just leave it like this. Now you might say, it's like, well, you know, previously we had to like, talk about the exact differences. Well, since we're just going to copy and paste all of those confidence intervals in there, I think that it's kind of redundant to actually do that. Um, but you could if you want. Uh, but this is basically what we have to do. We have to say that we're 95% confident that all of these have captured the true differences. And then we can talk about which ones, in fact, are significantly different from the others. Uh, anyhow, go look at the software videos if you want to see exactly how this is implemented with our software packages. And hopefully that helps out. Take it easy.